Hey guys. So it is Iman here. Sorry, this is like paper that's not mine. I'm back with another video. Um, just threw on, like I just have on a jacket and some shorts. So I just came off a very, very long walk. Um, these are like PJs. So that's why it's like so thin. It's because you're supposed to wear it to sleep. Again, in Miami, so it's very hot in Miami. So usually, like, you wear like really light weight stuff because it's always hot, twenty four seven, three hundred sixty five. Anyways, it is now almost midnight. Um, so basically, my closing thoughts for today is definitely about how the um, I think the whole like relationship genre on social media as of lately has been extremely oversaturated um I think relationships are something that are meant to improve you and I think no one no I don't think anyone should copy off anyone's relationship because it's just insincere and it um is dangerous to that potential of a couple but i also think that people should not force people into being in relationships i think relationships should be as free and as open as um it correlates to the situation um i think you definitely should be with someone who aligns with their values and beliefs um, but I think at the end of the day, both people should be adults about the relationship. And I find it, what I find the problem is, is on social media, I feel like men, when men and women get into a room and it's someone who, I think all um, labels aside, I'm not someone who likes to label people, especially um, people who may potentially be neurodivergent and we might not understand them wholly as a person. Um, I do not like to label them. And I don't even really take, I take the editing and the what I see as a grain of salt and I let it go. But what I will say is sometimes what we see online, I feel like in my personal opinion is we see men and women who both significantly sorry significantly have issues um with uh relationships interviewing each other as like a panel discussion and i'm not talking about every single type of video that this is but i'm talking about what i've recently seen on the far more the far masculine spectrum um I definitely have seen, well, let me start there. On the far masculine spectrum, I definitely have seen men sometimes bring women in who are far more vulnerable, um, simple-minded, disengaged, um, insecure than them. And they bring them on their platform to try to convince um, women and like that they might see that they that they would actually want to be with um rather platonically sexually romantically um in any facets maybe one time thing you know however the the couple decides um i i what i'm trying to say is that they bring women on the show just to say that like they you're not my type which is interesting because I'm like, well, if it was going to become an argument, then what was the point of the panel? I feel like if the panel more so, and then you have the far feminine side where the panel really is the men um, suggesting to women how they can be better, um, be happier in relationships and how relationships wholly can become better from the perspective of a man as advice to women. 
Um, and this is something that there really is not men versus women. This is men and women picking which side of the platform they want to be on, which side of the chessboard they want to be on, and how they want to argue for their own right, um, their own framework of thought. And I'm trying to be as unbiased as I possibly can. Um, but what I'm correlating that to is that we come out into society and we take those energy that energy which one we choose um and we utilize it in ways that can be beneficial or detrimental to us and i feel like both sides can be both detrimental to ourselves and to society so let me start with the far feminine side um or i guess i'm so sorry there so being so deeply um, thoughtful and careful and nurturing as a man or a woman in the relationships is dangerous, not to self, but I think to healing because if like you might get comfortable with the treacherous process of having to heal um such um traumatizing trauma which is not a great way to put that but breaking up in relationships and falling in love and then falling out of love and doing that that's very traumatic it's very very traumatic um it's a long process and i feel like when you're so good at put learning lessons and putting yourself back together i feel like sometimes you can get stuck in that cyclical nature of i'm going to of settling does that make sense so to say like it's almost like saying i'm okay with going being the partner that always makes the partner better for men and women and that is not okay because it's not healthy for self and um I would love to see more people truly, you know, pick up their own cross and bear their own cross and be responsible for their own healing um, and, and, and choose growth for themselves and starting that however it looks. I think the problem is growth really is a scary process. It's ugly. It's, it's, it's. Um, but there's no shame in it. It's actually really beautiful, but it's ugly. But it's beautiful. It's like birth. It's like, it kind of makes you a little dizzy. It's a little sick. It, little, it makes you be like, ooh. Oh, again. But it's like so, the most beautiful thing is created. And I think it birth the birthing process is very, 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 ooh. But... It happened because it was the it was the culmination. It was the result of a very beautiful thing that happened. Hopefully, um, you know, there's no um, universal thing um, except for God. Um, but hopefully, it came out of a beautiful marriage, a beautiful covenant that was a beautiful moment that created life almost 10 months later nine ten months later you have something that is very serious happening and like crazy and make you kind of lightheaded it's unforgettable but then it's once that process is over which is very well it's very painful but it it doesn't last that pain doesn't last hopefully i know some women who are like being birthed for like a very but um that pain doesn't last too long um and then the next day you know you're starting something that is so beautiful and it's permanent and it's forever and it's loving and it's 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 very beautiful and so i would love to see more of um, men and women on the far right feminine side to and i i'm not i don't really have the like um the words 
to perfectly describe this, I hope you're putting down what I'm getting up, but the people who are far more, um, who have really correlated and dug into those emotions and, um, you know what I'm getting, I think you can kind of pick up what I'm putting down, but, um, yeah, people who've done that, that intense emotional work, basically gone through that birthing process, um, and, I would like to see more so them not having to keep doing that process um, for people who just to like, it's like doing it one by one by one by one by one over and over and over again. I would really like um, them, I would really like, my prayer for them is for God to really show out in their lives and just show how like easy and effortless um, when you do it with God and for God and through God, how easy the process then becomes to falling in love and finding love. And um, on the far more masculine, the far, far masculine side, um, I would, because again, like I'm saying, there's men and women on the far, far masculine side. Um, there is a lot of spitefulness. It's so strange. Like, I, I just, um... There's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of, um, it's very uncomfortable because I feel like on the far masculine side, um, people have their mind frame made up about what they believe and i think that's a very strong trait and i think that's a very hard like hard power it's kind of like hard power versus soft power which you should utilize both um which honestly both both tactics i guess the far feminine is like soft power and the far far masculine is like hard power you you're gonna use both in relationships period so on the far hard power, um, I think that um, the 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 problem is the relationships that I feel like are more attracted to them are unequally yoked um i think when t two people who are rock solid in their opinion but their conflicting opinions can substantially cause lots of damage and confusion and chaos i feel like Someone who is so hard, extremely hard power has to be with someone who is soft power. Someone who has soft power, who utilizes soft power in relations doesn't necessarily have to be with someone who has hard power. But I feel like two people who both utilize hard power in relationships and generally, platonically, um, romantically, um, familial, all that usually cannot be with each other. Um, I think it's too easy to offend one another. Um, I think it's too easy to um, disembody your own values in order to prove the other person wrong or to prove yourself 
right i feel like when you start to i feel like there is a thin it's like a a, a slow digression of self when you try so hard to prove someone wrong or try so hard to change someone's mind that you can become consumed in that and you lose your idea of why why it matters if it matters to you so that this person can um love you more i think that is an authentic feeling but i don't think that is a feeling that's gonna help you i don't think that's sustainable i think that's something that people actually do feel but i don't think it's sustainable and i don't think i don't recommend it on the other hand if you're truly passionate about something you can argue it clearly calmly um in an intelligent convincing manner um that is not trying to change their mind but is truly giving them something to consider think about and ponder on which i feel like if they utilize hard power they would have the um skills to be able to ponder each side if they are true then i really feel like then they can't then then uh I truly feel like that um, that would be beneficial to both parties but I feel like when you just go in when you're doing it to impress when you're doing it for self this is kind of how I can correlate it well it is midnight so my mind's kind of tired but i think at the end of the day is like people who are so far hard power they it's like man versus man man versus self and man versus um nature i think and i think when you're always versus something you're bound to lose over and over and over and over again but i think what you do with those losses and i'm not trying to convert you to being more of a soft power type of person but i think the issue that comes up um and what is hardly recognized is that instead of taking it as a lesson it's like you take it as more reasoning to why society should actually see it from your perspective and not how you can um, grow. Does that make sense? I feel like people who are far, 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 because think of if something is soft, is malleable, is able to become something. It's like clay. You can, if you, this is what I'll say. If you're a potter, okay? I took pottery class, I loved it. Even though I made terrible pottery, I loved it. I love pottery because fresh clay is so soft. It has no air bubbles. It's just, it's so easy. It's like, it's I love it. I love fresh, new, straight out of the bag, straight out of the box, clay, right? But when the clay has been reused and uh, has dried out, hasn't properly been um, sealed. So, for example, um, when people fresh clay after you use fresh clay the people are responsible for f properly closing the the clay so that the next day you come and it's still as malleable over months and months it's going to become harder you're gonna have to 
um, send it back to be recycled. And then it's like fresh and new again. Um, but I think when you, when you don't properly seal it, it becomes really hard, right? And every single time it becomes hard, it becomes more difficult to use, and which means it's more difficult to need, which means it's more dangerous to your project because if you can't get all those air bubbles out, um, then it's gonna blow up in the kiln. And then not only are you gonna uh, like mess up your own project, but you're gonna mess up everyone else's project. And so I think that when people um, who do hard power when it comes to relate personal relationships instead of boundaries, like when you when you are making boundaries for yourself or a discipline for yourself or routine for yourself or trying to grow yourself, that when you're making decisions, yes, utilize hard power. But when you're come when you're trying to be in a relationship and it talks about matters of emotions, I think to use hard power. It's it's dangerous because it's not it is not it is not the best way state to build something with. But at the same time, I think that I have respect for all people, all lives. There's billions of billions and billions of people on this earth and um my opinion is not more right or wrong than anyone other any other person's opinion the only now i'm making this clear there's three things that i truly truly stand against which is abuse um abuse you know uh theft and not like theft from like corporations who are thieves themselves um but like from like from your own personal you know relationships um i'm talking about like personal relationships so abuse um theft which is a form of manipulation and lies and stuff like that and um addictions that's for me you know um which i know addictions can be really hard um but I think that when I mean addictions, I mean someone who is, would much rather, because I'm speaking from someone who's sober um, most of the time. And I think someone who is struggling with an, an addiction more so would rather be with someone who also has that same addiction um, and that's in all facets. Like, I like people who like to work. I like to be with people who like to work. I like to be with people who like to talk. It's just, it's like habitual. So like, I, or it, or even like, it, I like to be with people who like to talk, but also I like to be with people who um, like to be quiet and listen to me, but then also keep up with the conversation. I don't like to necessarily be around shy people because I'm like, oh, I'm shy, I'm making you shy. You know, that's not really great for me, but for someone who is like more quiet and listens very, very, very well, like that's the opposite attract that I really like um, because that's just my thing, you know? Um, I like, I, uh, yeah. But I think I really do live by the quote that I heard that someone said. You can tell when a woman is really with one, a man who loves her and um, is with a strong man because she really starts. And it was, um, it was in a, um, uh, a Sunday service um, a bishop said this. He was saying, you can tell when a woman's really with a strong man or really in love with a good strong man because she will start to have this like thing about her that is so young and so free and her mind will feel she'll feel confident and comfortable and I truly believe that's true um that doesn't make it easy or difficult um I think the reason why you know it's a strong man 
is because you can look all around and you can see adversaries and you can see um, spiritual things coming at her and all these things, but yet she's still so such a light and such a beauty and and so happy and so giving. It's like you can you can feel that there's something about life that's filling up her cup and um to experience that um in a non-sexual way is strange it's almost like like what people say it's diluted because it's like how how come can this happen but not even truly platonically but like almost just like slowly spiritually it's so strange it's like it's like love but there was no there was no need well for the past what, nine months for the past nine months there was no need for it to be physical um if if we met we went on one date um it was perfect it was it didn't get um sexually physical but it was physical it was politely physical (laughs) almost aggressively not too aggressive (laughs) um and then there was, you know, your routine talking stage. And then there was a breakup stage. And it wasn't until me choosing to still be me what it what it was well, first of all, I kept running into this person in public, so that was kind of crazy. I'm like, I'm running into this fucking guy in public. Like, oh, great. <laughs> like, he would be on dates, and I would be like, oh, I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, um, I think also what is so interesting is that you hear about how this person feels right from time to time um because i don't really date i'm more of like a quiet more reserved but i just at this point in my life where i feel like dating is pushed upon you and i feel like if something is so urgently pushed i feel like it's a good idea um but i i don't it doesn't necessarily have to be done in the fashion that is typical for your age um so i just like to simply just do it slowly um build slowly and like actually give people a chance to see where they are a year later and see where i am a year later and just like see if knowing me personally and have met me personally um have talked to me personally how that changes their frame of mind a year later you know um because sometimes i feel like when you dive in so fast and you're constantly seeing someone over and over again and you've only known them for a quarter of a year, I think that can be very detrimental because it's almost as like you start to your your habitual dependency um is not good. It's not good for your habitual dependency. But I feel like if you slowly date someone, see them every three months. And don't date in between. And if you have sex, have sex. I encourage sex. <laughs> but slowly date. And then you'll, you'll see. 
it's almost like then you you're gonna fall in love, <laughs> or you're not, and you're not gonna see them again. And but then it's like, oh well, I only met them a few times. But then it's also like they're always putting their best foot forward. But what I will say is when I hear from this person, you know, from around town or whatever, um, the last I heard from them is that they were like, oh my God, look at this girl. Like, is that you? Like, oh my God, like, this is crazy. Like, they're like, this is literally crazy. Like, you make me nervous, you make me shy. And I'm like, I'm gonna be like, crying like oh my god i wish i could be with that person i miss them so much and they're so great um it's just very strange but i definitely encourage um people to slowly date and i feel like if if you can get behind slowly dating um my intention was not to wait till marriage. Um, my intention was to slowly date and after 90 days to begin a sexual relationship with this person. Um, but I did express to them after a few drinks that ideally I would wait till marriage, right? And I think they were, we both laughed about it like, okay, we're adults, you know? Um, but I think after 90 days, I think after 30 days, we were just kind of like, um, I would like to check back in. I think, I think it was kind of like, this is a person that I would like to mature for. And if... I am with someone else then I'm then there's someone that then God then God sent me an angel you know and that's kind of how it feels um so yeah so that's my little rant in the middle of the night so tired but yeah Taking life slow. You know what I mean? Falling in love slow. Just slowing down. You know? All right, well, good night, guys. It's past midnight, so I'm gonna go. I'll see you later. Bye.